Hey, what's up guys? It's the narrator here and I hope you're all having a fantastic day. And if your day is already over, well, I hope it was a great one. And just a reminder that if you enjoy the clear and concise explanations, then make sure to support the channel by subscribing down below and liking the video. Thank you. So just last month, some very serious and horrible allegations arose in the Smash community that resulted in many top tier pros and arguably the faces of the Smash scene kicked out of the community forever. A lot of people, including myself, were absolutely shattered that the people that we looked up to could commit such terrible acts, but at the end of the day we don't know who they are or how they act outside of the games that they play so i think a lot of people learn a lesson that just because they're good entertainers it doesn't mean that they are good people so what's this video about? Well, I thought it would be a good idea to update you all on what those players are up to nowadays since it's been roughly under two months since it all happened. We're going to look at their social medias and what happened after they were outed. With that being said, I think the first person we should look at is Zero. Now I'll leave a link to my video explaining what happened with each player in the description below and maybe there'll be a link, I don't know, on like the, the top right of the screen. But yeah, let's talk Zero. So Zero was initially outed for his inappropriate behavior towards Jisoo and after his pretty crappy first tweet longer in reply to her, he subsequently had to release two more where he downplayed the grooming of a minor and then just outright admitted everything once more evidence was going to be brought to light. A lot of people took Zero's initial responses in very bad taste. The guy essentially was trying to dodge any blame and even used his uh, upbringing as an excuse for his behavior. A lot of people just wanted him to take responsibility for his actions and so the fact that it took him three Three twit longest to admit his wrongdoings was just kind of laughable to a lot of people. So what's going on now? Well, it's no surprise that his YouTube is still up and running. He gains roughly around 1 million views a month, but no new videos have been posted. He's still monetized and earning money from the channel. The last thing that was posted on the channel was an explanation from him saying that he is in therapy at the moment and seeking ways to improve. I don't condone his past behavior and quite frankly, I find it quite horrible that he did those things, but I'm glad that he's seeking help because he recognizes that there is something wrong with him that he needs to work on. So I hope his therapy does go well. Apart from that, his Twitter is very silent. He deleted all of his previous tweets and seems to have fallen off the face of the internet and he was banned from Twitch. So what about Nairo? Well, just like the Zero situation, the Nairo one was an absolute shock to so many people. Nairo was outed by Captain Zack in a twit longer, where he essentially claims that Nairo allowed Zack to perform oral sex on him, despite Nairo being in his 20s and Zack being like 15 at the time. When the initial twit longer was released by Zack, it exposed that Nairo was paying off Zack to keep quiet about the whole thing. After it was released, Nairo quickly deleted his Twitter account and the, then re-enabled after he wrote up a twit longer of his own, where he essentially admitted everything and decided to leave the community. To this day, his Twitter account is deactivated, although his YouTube account is still up and running, monetized, earning money. The Nairo situation was a pretty open and shot case. There was no real beating around the bush. The evidence was there. A lot of people honestly took Nairo's side in this situation, acting as if Captain Zack had forced him into doing those things with him. And you know, at first glance of those messages, it came as a shock that Zack would out him, despite what looked like the clear-cut sexual advantage advances by him on his part, but quite frankly, it doesn't excuse the fact that Nairo let it happen. He was well aware of Zack's age and he himself was much older than Zack, so he should have just pushed him away and said no. It's really that simple and people just seem to ignore it. Anyways, what about Sinpi? Now I copped a lot of flack initially in my first video about this misconduct because I pronounced her name wrong throughout the whole video, so yeah, I apologize for that. But the Pape and Sinpi situation sort of started the entire Smash Abuse saga where people started feeling more comfortable coming out with their own stories. Pape went into detail about a sexual relationship he had with Sinpi when he was a minor and she was in her 20s, and it went over how it was a traumatic experience for him due to the mental toll um, that he took as he was young and he felt like he was being manipulated. A lot of people downplay this abuse to, uh, to this day because they see a young guy getting some ass from an older woman and it's fucking terrible. And completely ignores the abuse that the victim suffered and even though it seems cool on the outside you don't know what else that person had to go through with that being said the allegations came out simply didn't address anything her twitter account remains largely the same with no new tweets her twitch also hasn't been touched over two months and she seems to have just left social media altogether without admitting anything 
Now, what about the anti situation? Now, the anti situation was probably one of the odd ones. He essentially admitted to sleeping with a 16 year old girl, but claimed that he didn't know how old she was. In the girl's twit longer post, she claims that she had told him prior to going out with him and his friends her age, but it's just a matter of he said, she said. At the end of the day, we do know that they met over Tinder, where you have to be over the age of 18 to use it. However, she seemed to have lied about her age. After her twit longer came out, Anti released his own, confirming that they did have intercourse, but he didn't know she was underage. He quickly deleted the twit longer not long after though, and said that he was going to contact his lawyers in regards to the situation. I believe he did this because the state that he uh, that this occurred in still applies statutory rape charges even if the other person lied about their age. After the twit longer, he kept his Twitter up for a while, and it seemed like he was going to transition over to the Street Fighter community as he left the Smash community of his own accord. But looking for his Twitter today, it shows that it has been deactivated. His Twitch account is still up, but he hasn't gone live in a long time, and the same goes for his YouTube, no new videos for quite a while. He still does have an Instagram, but that seems to be largely inactive as well. Okay, what about D1? So the D1 allegations, in all honesty, I thought that the D1 allegations and his response was handled fairly well. It was the only situation that didn't involve a minor. The accuser went on to say that he had sexually assaulted her while she was drunk and she didn't remember consenting to anything, but his response was he was drunk and he didn't remember anything either. It essentially was again a he said, she said situation. There was no clear evidence that he had forced himself on her. It seemed to be the case of just two adults being drunk and having sex. That's really just it. However, after the allegations came to light, he announced he'd be leaving the Smash community Community. and looking at his Twitter today, he has no new posts since it occurred, and the same applies for his YouTube account, he just seemed to have up and left social media completely. So what about the Keitaro situation? Now the Keitaro situation was terrible. Allegations arose that he had invited a minor over to a house party that took place at one of Sky Williams' houses and he was supposed to be looking after that girl. However, he allowed her to get drunk whilst he himself remained sober throughout the entire time. As the night progressed, she wanted to go into the pool so she just wore a long shirt over herself and jumped in with him. And just like the Captain Zack situation, she started fondling Keitaro and eventually put him inside of her. He says in his statement that he was shocked and asked what are you doing, but he didn't stop it and he kept going with it. This was just another clear cut case. He admitted everything and personally I thought it was disgusting that he let the minor in his care get drunk and then took advantage of her. Today though, he hasn't uploaded anything to his YouTube, he hasn't posted anything new to Instagram, and his Twitch account hasn't had any new broadcasts, and his Twitter is now private. So as you can imagine, a lot of the people who were caught up in the uh, misconduct and allegations that arose last month have just up and left their social medias completely. Um, I still think that someone like Zero is probably going to make a return sometime. Um, just because of the whole therapy thing, it seems like he was kind of setting up for that you know, oh, I'm better now, so I'm going to come back and, and try to rebuild my community and rebuild what I've, um, what I've already, like, laid out. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see, you know, if someone like, if any of them will return to the scene at all, uh, or at least try to make an attempt to do something like that. Um, so yeah, what do you guys think about, uh, you know, any one of them potentially returning? Um, you know, I'd be interested to see what, what people actually think about it. Um, because, you know, if they take the steps necessary to try and, uh, you know, rebuild their mental, mental health and whatnot, and, um, you know, just try to really, I don't want to say cure themselves, but, you know, like help themselves in a way where they're not going to do that anymore. Do you think that that's, you know, acceptable enough? Or do you think that they should just go to jail completely? I'd love to hear what you think down below. Thank you.